What is up you guys? My name is Spencer. Welcome to FTM Transtastic and I know today is not my day. So please forgive me but I'm also going to talk super fast and this is going to be super quick because I am super late to my work and I gotta be there. This week we're discussing how we feel about losing our hair while in tea or just hair loss in general. So before I start into that, let me first debunk a few myths that seem to be cycling around the trans community when it comes to hair loss. One, hair loss is thought to be determined solely by the maternal trait of the X chromosome, which though the um, hereditary trait is very dominant in that chromosome, science has proved that there are other factors that go into hair loss. Unfortunately, the only safe bet is that if your dad's bald, you're probably going to be bald too. But the good news of that is that two of three men experience baldness by the age of 50. So honestly, it is not something to be too concerned, too worried, or too scared about because on, if you have hair by the end of the age of 50, you're kind of the odd one out. There's been a lot of research in hair um, therapy and hair regrowth. We spend roughly $1 billion on hair regrowth a year, and the positive thing about it is we finally figured out what it is that causes hair loss. Now, it is not age, it is not high T, and it is not active working out. What it is is what's called progenitor cells in the scalp have died or malfunctioned. And because we figured that out, it's a huge, huge step for us because we can start figuring out how to reactivate those cells. So hair loss is not caused strictly by the mom's side. It's the dad's side too, all working together as the human body forms. And that is why we lose our hair. Two, no. High T does not mean you're gonna lose your hair. Low T does not mean you're gonna lose your hair. No T does not mean you're gonna lose your hair. T does not actually affect whether or not you lose your hair. Again, it's the progenitor cells that are on your scalp for whatever reason, they malfunction throughout your time span, which causes your hair to recede and then eventually bald. It's really awesome to know that if you do have any type of receding, Propecia and Rogaine work wonders, but let me first tell you what they are used for. It's not to regrow hair. Propecia and Rogaine are used to actually cling on to the healthy progenitor cells and keep them alive. So though nine times out of 10, you won't experience regrowth, you won't experience hair loss either. And hey, that's half the battle, right? Three, and the last myth before I actually talk about my feelings on this matter is whether product causes your hair to fall out. That is a huge myth and that is actually not true. Product does not cause your hair to fall out. What causes your hair to fall out is again, the cells on top of your head. Whether you use nothing or everything in the world is not going to change that fact and it's been proven that none of the products out there, at least in mainstream, because they can't test all the problems in the world, none of the products out there actually affect the progenitor cells, whether they, they don't affect their growth and it doesn't affect them dying. It just exists. So with that being said, you can use as much as you want or as little as you want, but it's not going to change the fact if you have the predetermined trait to go bald. Um, what has showed some effect when it comes to baldness is if you tease your hair, if you constantly straighten or blow dry your hair, or if you pick your hair out. So the less mechanical overdrive you put on your hair, the better, but if you're predisposed to it, you're predisposed to it. So, All right, so those are my three debunking myths about it. Um, if you have any questions, concerns about that, hit me up and I'll tell you where I got all my information from. I'm all about sharing the wealth, and hopefully it all comes from credible resources. Um, so my whole opinion on going bald. Personally, for me, I don't want to go bald. I do like my hair and I want to continue to manipulate it in other ways, especially if down the line I want dreads or something. So I don't want to go bald, but if I do go bald, it's okay. I can rock a fade. I think I can rock a bald head. And honestly, at the end of the day, if my hair gram is weak, my wig game just got that much stronger. But no, in all seriousness, if I do go bald, I would probably look into resources on how to regrow my hair and how to conserve the hair I have, and honestly, just hairstyles that flatter me without hair. It's a grieving process for us all, but honestly, it's a process that I am not scared about taking, especially since every other part of my body makes me so much more happy, so much more myself. So don't worry about going bald if you're worried about going bald. If you are worried about going bald, it's nothing to be, weird, be too concerned about. Everyone goes through hair loss in their lifetime. It just shows a sign of maturity and yeah, that, that's all I have for you. So thank you for taking, for listening to me really spread through this entire um, process. Any questions, concerns, problems, issues, qualms, you know where to find me, you know how to hit me up. I hope you guys are having a great week and are gearing up for an even better weekend. It is Wednesday. It is Spencer. Until next time.